Good morning, my friends. I'm Pastor Ben Hayes from First Baptist Church, Dadeville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day on this dreary Monday. But it's a magnificent Monday. I uh, got some bad weather coming in tonight. Stay safe. Uh, and if you need us, please don't hesitate to call on us. But right now, if you've got your Bibles, turn with me to Romans chapter 8. We're in this amazing passage that we've been dealing with the last couple of days, starting in uh, verse 28, which we all know so well, Paul says, and we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. And uh, we talked about that. I'm not going to go into that in detail, but just know that everything that happens, good or bad, in your life, God allows it to happen as a believer for your good and for his glory. Now, that's an amazing truth. Verse 29, listen to what he says. For whom he foreknew, <clears throat> who knew in advance, he knew in advance that they were going to come into that relationship with him because God knows everything from beginning to end. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that we will be more and more like Jesus, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. <clears throat> Jesus is the firstborn. We are the followers. We are the brethren that came along. And one day we'll be just like him when we get to heaven. What an amazing truth. But then look at verse 30, where we're picking up today. Moreover, whom he predestined. Now think about this. The ones he predestined are the ones that he foreknew. That's where I differ with the Calvinist uh, bunch, and, and uh, with all due respect to them, I, I think that they're wrong in this, but they think I'm wrong in this too. But uh, this is what it says, whom he predestined, the ones he foreknew, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Now, I want you to remember this. Jesus made this clear, John chapter 6. No one comes to the Father unless the Father draws him. We are called into his presence. Now, understand, we as believers have a responsibility to voice that call to the people around us. But it is God who does the calling. If the Holy Spirit doesn't call them, then they are not coming into that relationship with him. Now, I personally believe that at some point, in some way, God calls every human being, that he gives them enough knowledge and understanding that they have that opportunity to respond <clears throat> to that calling that he places on his life. But keep in mind, the ones he foreknew, he predestined. Those he predestined, he called into that right relationship with him. Now listen to this. Those whom he called, he justified. Now, I, I got to tell you, that means that those who are called respond to his invitation. They are justified. They are made as if they had never sinned. When they respond to his invitation by trusting in Jesus as Lord and Savior of their lives, they are made as if they'd never sinned. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine having all your debts wiped clean? Not just your financial debts, <clears throat> but all of those things that you have done to hurt other people, that uh, maybe things you said, things you did, things you didn't say, things you didn't do, all of that's wiped away as if it had never existed. Can you imagine that? Well, that's what God does with our sin. He wipes it so clean that it is as if we had never made that mistake, as if we had never sinned against the Father. So when we're called, we respond to that call. He justifies us. And those whom he justified... These he also glorified. Now I want you to see this. This is past tense. He also glorified. That means that we are in that process even now of becoming more and more like Jesus. One day we will be exactly like him. We'll receive that glorified body. And uh, we will uh, experience the joys of heaven being in the presence of the Father. But it is a process. The calling comes first. God invites us. We respond to that call. Then we are justified, made as if we'd never sinned. Now, in between the justification and the glorification is the process called sanctification. We've talked about this before. And this is that process that we're living in now where each and every day God is chipping away the old man. God is sanding down those uh, burrs that, uh, that, that stick out and he is conforming us to the image of his own son, making us more and more like him. 
but it's also our responsibility to focus on worship, to focus on Bible study, to focus on prayer, to focus on evangelism, to focus on ministry, to do the things that God has called us to do. And that's how he begins to work in our lives and how he transforms us from where we were as old men dead in our sins to new creations alive in Christ Jesus. Think about that today. Are you doing what you need to do so that God can use that to glorify you? Think about that. Be blessed. I'll see you back here tomorrow.